Hello and welcome to another episode of Start Writing. Today I interview Rennie Saunders. He is the founder of an online writing community called Shut Up and Write. Uh, on the podcast, we've talked about how you you begin your novel in the brainstorming phase and then you draft it. And then after that, you got to figure out how to edit it and then in the end you share it. And Rennie's company, Shut Up and Write, is about helping writers in the drafting phase. And it comes from a deceptively simple idea. So you you find a chapter, and this is a worldwide organization, so you can find them somewhere near you, I can almost guarantee it. And you, you find the local chapter, and you go down to the Shut Up and Write meeting, which, you know, maybe that's Wednesday night or Tuesday night or something like that. And you go and you meet other writers, you, you, you tell them about what you're working on, and then you shut up and you write. And so you're, you're sitting there with this group of individuals who understand the struggle and the, the, solitary, the solitary challenge that writing is. And they understand you and you sit down and you write. And, and this creates an accountability that you can't get... Uh, so that can be hard to find and to, to, to get that motivation when you're alone. So we, our discussion today, it was a ton of fun. We talk about that. We also talk about Rennie's own writing. And I just love that his community is so much about motivating writers to finish that first draft, you know, to get through that. And, and they do this motivation through community and kindness. And I, I just think it's so awesome. And I'll, I'll just make a call out to the show notes. Look at the show notes. I have, I have links to some of the stuff that we talk about, in particular, the prompts. So at shutupright.com, they have a list of prompts that can, that can get those creative juices flowing if you're feeling like you have writer's block and you can't get going. So without further ado, here's my interview with Rennie Saunders from Shut Up and Write. So I, I'm, I'm personally a little obsessed with names and, uh, that's a huge part of my writing, but I just love hearing people's stories about their names. So are, are you named after someone or how did your name come about? Actually, it's, it's kind of fun having a unique name. Um, I'm named after my grand, both of my grandfathers. I have one's first name, Warren, and I have one's middle name, Madison. And so when I was born, they all sat around and decided what they were going to call me. They call me Warry, or they going to call me Maddie. <laughs> And ended up with Rennie because you know everything turns into a nickname. So mm-hmm. um, I just happened to happen onto that, and I've I've got good company, you know, with Michael Rennie and Rennie Stinnett, and there's a few of us out there. But um, I yeah, and and I try to make the most of it. You know, <laughs> well, it's a cool name and uh, it's memorable. I love Thank I love you. that it's not just run of the mill. Um. Okay. So. Uh, I wanted to ask you about your career path. So, and I'm curious, how did you first make money and how did you first make money writing? And then kind of how did that end up where you are now? Well, it's interesting because the, um, I'll answer the second part of the question first, which is, I don't think I've ever made any money writing per se as a, once I started thinking of myself as a writer, I had to go back to the fact that I did actually make a really good living because I was a marketing writer and a technical writer um, for years as a, uh, both as a graphic designer. And and as I became a a creative director, um, I have a a special talent for being able to understand technical jargon and to translate it into uh, actionable items. So um, I did that for years and, and I actually, um, I first, my, my first career was actually in kitchens um, working in restaurants while I was going through art school. Mm. And um, I actually th- thought I was going to be a fine artist. I went to the Art Students League in New York, um, I, and I was apprenticing to a painter, wow. stretching their canvas, mixing their mixing their paints. And while I was doing that, I decided to take a few graphic design courses at um, Parsons School of Design. Um, they would have no idea who I was. So I was probably there for a year or two. Um, picking up a few classes, got a job in graphic design and then did it for decades, um, made a really good, really good living at that. So, um, it wasn't until I, I started writing saying, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to become a creative writer. I'm going to, I'm going to become, uh, when you're doing marketing writing in particular, you're trying to condense so much information into as few words as possible. 
And so I learned, was teaching myself to do the opposite and I became Dickensian uh, <laughs> writing volumes and volumes um, and realized, oh, I am a writer. I'm not just a writer. I'm a storyteller. And that really helped sink that in. And then as I followed that train, I realized humans are storytellers. And that sort of ties into other things that I do and have done. Well, so can I ask about how old were you when you when that hit you? Oh, I'm a writer and I'm a storyteller. I wrote my first science fiction story when I was 12 and I was listening to a Pink Floyd album and, um, <laughs> and I wrote this and I still have it in a, in a, um, in one of my notebooks. Um, it's based on their song, set the controls for the heart of the sun. And it's anything you would expect a 12 year old to write <laughs> to Pink Floyd on his, on his um, father's stereo system. Um, but then when I was in art school, I, I started writing a lot. I was writing some comic outlines. Um, I actually, another thing I have in a notebook is the submission um, guidelines from Isaac Asimov's um, science fiction and fantasy magazine um, that I at requested at age 18. <laughs> I s submitted to them. I've never been published by them, but um so it just, it, there, there's a thread that happens. You know, I write a few stories, I do this, and then I come around to the fact that when I'm sitting, no matter where you go, I mean, just po this podcast is a perfect example of it. We're talking story. You're mm -hmm. asking me about a story, right? And so um, I'm going to try and weave something that has some pathos, some interest, <laughs> some dark moments, some some moments of, of uh, you know, um what do you call it? Uh, where, where, where we win against the bad guys, you know, are, are in action. So I, in all the traveling I've done, it just occurred to me, you know, whether I was in, in Southeast Asia in a cafe talking to locals or in um, Arkansas, where I'm from sitting in a pub, people sit around and talk story. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, well, I want to record that and I want to be part of it. Huh. That's, so that's how I knew I was a story. Yeah. Um, so you said you're writing scripts for comic books. Did you ever work on, did you ever, like start rough drafts of those books or? I did. And I actually have been lucky because of, because I'm, I've been in the art world. Um, you know, we'd, we'd start working on a thing, but then you, you know, you get distracted by all the other things that happen. Um, and and there are those those um, those turning points. Um, one of the moments, so I was in New York City, I was going to art school, and I also on top of all this, I was a model maker. I'd been making model race cars and spaceships and <laughs> painting them my whole life. And when I went to see Star Wars in Times Square the weekend it came out, <laughs> and I was like. I'm moving to California. I'm going to go work for LucasArts. Whoa, and I'm going to build models. Dang. And, and I actually, that's what got me out here to California in the first place. I was going to do that. And then I got distracted. <laughs> and I started doing a different thing. And um, so they have no idea who I am and the models I could have made. But, you know, <laughs> it could have been. So it's the same thing with comics. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, I've got, I've got lots of drafts of, of lots of different things. And so, you know, over time by doing it, I mean, there's a process of writing and rewriting and going, oh, I've read this. I've written the same thing twice in two different ways. I'm going to I'm going to merge them. Huh. I'm going to create a singular story. And that's sort of where I am now. Cool. Well, where you are now, meaning you're you're still doing that sort of thing or that's where your current story is or. Right. So um, uh, one of the things is shut up and write. Um, I created that I created this method for myself to get my writing done. Cause I realized the, mm. the one thing I didn't do because I'm easily distracted <laughs> and I'm super interested in everything is that, that if I created a time and a place at the same time, at the same place every week, and I put it on a calendar so other people would join me, I would show up huh. rain, sleet, snow, me and the postman would be there. Right. And, um, and because of that, I became Dickensian. I started writing volumes and I would write an hour a week with friends, but then I would go to, you know, I would, I, I, I would just write more and more. And this, this, um, there, there's a secret in there, which is people say, how do I get published? How do I get edited? How I find this out? I found that 
you have to just write a lot. You just have to write and you have to write because it's the right thing to do. Not because I'm, I'm not, I've written all these novels. I've written some novellas. I've some short stories and I haven't created shut up and publish yet. So <laughs> we'll have to wait for, you know, another, another couple of years. We'll do, we'll do that. I'll figure that out. But in the meantime, so I have published one story just to say, good, I'm now, I'm now published. Mm-hmm. I'm working with an artist. We're going to, um, publish a graphic um, version of that oh, cool. same story. We're just going to redo it. Um, and we're practicing this so that I can do that with my, the novel, the Proteus knife um, that I'm oh. very close to um, very close to finishing um, another rewrite. Huh. Dang. That's cool. Uh, so you, when you say working with an artist, cause I know you're an artist, uh, does that mean you're hiring right. someone or, Going back and forth, how how does that work? Yeah, I pay I pay him for his time. I'm I'm because I came out of an art school and came out of graphic design and a, just like musicians are like here, do this for me for cheap. It'll be good for your resume. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in that, right? So I we've worked out a way that I can pay him for the work he does and 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 gain no, notoriety. But I mm-hmm. um, yes, yeah, so and I actually met him. Um, at the game developers conference here in San Francisco, oh, cool. I went w- wandering around in the um, in in the room there where all the young, excited um, artists and programmers were, and we just hit it off like that. And we've been friends for seven years now, and we've done some really amazing things together. Dang. And um, I think it's going to blow mine <laughs> when, when we come out with that. So, huh. dang, that's cool. That's so exciting. Um, I. I you mentioned that you, well, I guess it's getting a little ahead of the ahead of the game. You mentioned that first group of friends that started keeping you accountable. Um, mm-hmm. Were those people you already knew that you're already accountable with? How, how did you connect with that first group? And I mean, you don't have to say names, but you could. Uh, who, who was in that first group, and how did that come together? So I had done when when I decided to do this, I did it. Um, um, I applied effort, um, discipline and effort to it and absorbed every book I could find workshops, writing workshops, editing workshops, um, how to meet your agent kind of things and realize, Oh, I don't need an agent. I need to write. (laughs) Um, and, and, and ended up in a, a two different writing groups. One was a science fiction writing group based out of uh, borderlands bookstore. Um, another one was just a, a, thing that met at a at a at a room in this fancy house um here in san francisco every week and i realized oh all i need is a, a time and a place and so i cr- got on to meet up and i created shut up and oh. write and and started showing up and the first week it was just me and the second week it was me and one other person and after about a month or two there were about a dozen of us oh. and um I'll drop a name. Bob was one of the originals. He was also from marketing. He had run a, a a wine tasting meetup and he finished his novel while he was there and published it and then moved back to LA. And when he went back, went to LA, he started the LA chapter mm. of shut up and write. And Nithin had traveled around the world uh, out of college. He had traveled all the way around the world and had a stack of journals. And so he spent, Six months every week, he would sit down and just copy a journal into his into his, um, you know, typing. He was typing up his journal. Oh, interesting. Found the narrative, wrote and wrote the book about his journals around his journeys around the world. Huh. And I'm I apologize to Nathan if he hears this that I've forgotten <laughs> the title of his book. Right, it's walking um, quietly and peacefully, something like that. Huh. And so he moved to New York City, got into a Columbia University, and started the New York City chapter. Right. Because by then we had developed the method, all that learning I had taken about how to show up to the page, how to not edit while you write all of these, you know, how to divide the the writing process. We had div- we had a document and we could hand it to people and say, this is how you this is how you get the most right out of your writing time. This is how you don't because we're we're um, the other thing about humans is not only are we really good storytellers and in, 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 like intrinsically storytellers. We're intrinsically excuse me. <laughs> um, we'll find 
anything we want to do, we'll, we can come up with three different excuses. So if you've got 10 things to do, you've got 30 excuses. So we literally built the shut up and write method to get rid of 95% of those excuses. Mm. The only one you can use is I'm sick. My kid's sick, you know, and, and it's fine. You, you, you know, you sign up to come and you don't make it. You're an adult. We don't, we don't mind. But when you do come, we're excited yeah. because you're there with us and you're part of this moment of, of creativity and writing and focus. <laughs> now, so I, I, I deeply believe in your method. And uh, to be honest though, when I first saw it, I, I wasn't sure I got it. Cause I was like, it, it almost seems too simple. I, I didn't understand that this is an organization, but this is a huge organization and you, you guys are, you know, nationwide and worldwide. Uh, and yeah, anyway, I, I strongly believe in that. We, we've had a lecture series going on on our podcast. And one of the things I just harp on over and over is you need a finished draft for most of this, most of this to apply. So, so you got to write your book. Right. Right. Uh, and I just think it's so cool that right. that's what you guys are facilitating. And, and, and so the, 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 the fancy things come from simple actions, the, the complex things come from doing simple things repeatedly, right? So one of, one, of, one of the things I get asked is, what's the most important thing in writing? And I say, write enough to find your voice. Hmm. Write enough to get the voices out of your head onto the paper. And, because, and, and, and again, we haven't addressed the fact that we're saying, how do I get a book out? How do I get published? That's so unimportant. That's a that's a model that's based on um, I'm not worthy. I'm not a writer if I'm not published. Mm. I mean, I've published one story just to see if I could do it. That doesn't take away from the fact that I write a minimum, a minimum of an hour a day. Wow. Right. And and what is that writing? That's not just sitting down writing story. That's mind mapping. That's ideating. Mm. That's editing. That's any of the other things that are part of the writing process. But I'm I get to the end of the day and it's nine o'clock and I'm organizing what have i gotten finished today what do i need to do tomorrow and i'm like i didn't write so i'll uh -huh. actually get out a blank piece of paper and just start taking you know like whether it's a scene from a novel or something that happened to me that day or an idea i had for my business that's all writing and it's all valid yeah dang that's cool uh how how many days has that chain gone on how how, how many consecutive days of keeping that habit well like i say i got i i COVID finally caught me back in the fall. Mm. So, you know, and I really do like writing with other people. We've pivoted, shut up and write has pivoted from being primarily in cafes with some other facilities like libraries and such to being online. And we have a very strong, very passionate, active online um, community that we've now transferred onto our new platform mm. or are transferring it onto our new platform. Um, because meetup doesn't do that as well. So we'll, we're going to, we're working with meetup to make sure that the, it is smooth, but we're supporting our writers yeah. with this platform and I'll do those online things, but I I've missed um, being in the company of other people. I really thrive on that sitting together. So what's that, what's that thread? I mean, I would, I mean, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to brag, but I mean, it's years, yeah, yeah. years, right? I mean, it's like, um, so with all the, uh, th those were all caveats. Yeah, I'm not making excuses. I'm just sort of saying, well, you know, there were some interruptions in there, but by and large, I don't, I get to the end of the day mm. and I haven't put my thoughts on paper because it's the right thing to do. It helps me organize my thinking, organize my life, prepare for the next thing. Then I'm incomplete. I go to sleep. Unhappy. Yeah. Like I didn't get gruel. I didn't get my gruel for the evening. Huh. No, that's so cool. So, and I'm not saying this to give you a big head, but uh, that I, I just feel like that's the key right there, sticking with it. And I, I think it, it's exemplary and it's the exact kind of example that we want for our audience here. So we're, we're talking, we, we talk a lot about healthy habits, right? Our, our community of, of excited, you know, wherever we are, we're, you know, the articles in the, in the, and the, our Apple News are about, you know, whether this type of sugar is bad or should we be eating this much meat or any, we want to have an impact on the world and all of that stuff. So we're, we start with the personal. And it's like, well, I'm going to go to yoga class at least once or twice a week. And I'm going to, 
I'm going to start trying to do, you know, eat less meat if I'm, if I'm a meat eater or any of those things. You're trying to build healthy habits. What I'm telling you is writing is an ultimate healthy habit. It belongs right there next to your yoga class and your, um, you know, your meditation because you're organizing your thoughts. You're becoming a better thinker because you can't be a good writer if you're not a, if you're a, a messy thinker. Even people like Philip K. Dick, who was just a maniac, right? I mean, the guy was just a maniac. His writing was so good and has been made into so many things because he, his thinking was organized, even in the midst of whatever else he was going on, going through. Yeah. Dang, that's cool. <laughs> okay. Um, let me circle back. Let's see. Okay. I, I wanted to talk about your book. So you said you published it. Your, your book is called Pale Angel. And uh, mm -hmm. we've recently, in our lecture series, we've been talking about uh, essentially three pillars of writing, which are plot and hero and world or you know your setting so so give us a little uh give us a hook for each of those elements tell us something cool about the plot so something cool about the character and something cool about the world so so you're in your entree so this is one of five stories i'm writing that are all connected and the main character in the book i'll give it away and, mm -hmm. and all your your listeners will know this the main character is actually a, a living starship oh. and it's a space it's a spaceship and it's the first starship and this was so in writing i'm gonna i'm gonna jump over here for a second in writing my novels it's three thousand years in the future and i've got these people on this other planet and it was a colony world and at a certain point i went how did they get there mm. and so i came all the way back to here and wrote this series of stories about how they got there and why the technology is like it is. You know, I was building this for myself, and it turned into this series of stories. So each of these five stories has a different protagonist. And each protagonist has the foibles that um, I, I try and draw them from maybe my own, you know, I start with what I know. Um, so the plot is humanity for what it is, is trying to build the first, and we figured out how to do faster than light drive. It's really, really complicated. We'll take every resource in the solar system and I'm going down to the microscopic level, one character on the planet, on, 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 moon, on the moon, who's just trying to make a living mm. being in a gang. He's in a gang. He's trying to make a living, but he really wants to be on that starship. He really wants to get out of this life. Um, and so the, the, the plot is, can he figure out how to get himself onto the starship when it gets built and, and, and goes off to another star system? Dang, that's cool. The, um, right. And so the, 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 what was the third one? So the, the, the hero, the plot, and what was the third one? The, uh, just the something from the world, which you've kind of given us that, but right, right, right. So the, the if you imagine there are 3 trillion people in the solar system, you know, we're we're harvesting the the asteroid belts and we mm. have outposts on on Uranus and Neptune and we're building this 10 kilometer long biotech living, breathing starship and everything that kind of comes from that. How do you get to that? Mm. So. Dang, that's cool. I love it. <laughs> so this this particular story, this this one, like I say, there's five stories in this and each one has a different a different um protagonist. Uh -huh. Um, and this, this fellow's name is Tyler and he is, um, uh, he has psionic powers and he has no, uh, people take advantage of him for that. Th this is the first book in a series of five books and they're, they're right. eventually going to land on this, uh, this far away star. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. And then, and then, and then in the, in the, the novel, the Proteus knife, which I've been working on, which is a full-blown novel um and it's one of three that i've written and but i'm really working on publishing this one that starship is just they call it the steady moon it's just a an, a moon that orbits the planet from always in the same place in the sky because it's been parked in orbit for a thousand years and doesn't do anything it just sits uh, there and reflects the sun huh. right they have no idea these my people my characters in that novel have no idea that there's anything other than the world they're on hey Dang, that's cool. Man, this is such a good setup. I'm excited. <laughs> Me too. I just got, just got to keep writing. Yeah, yeah. You know. um, 
so this is kind of, kind of a fun one to personify you a little bit. If I were to make you a character in a novel, what quirky writing habit do you have that would make you stand out as unique and memorable? Um, yeah, this, this is a fun question because I do have, I don't know, I've not encountered anyone who does this, which is I'll set a scene and then I'm just sort of like a court, I think of myself as a court reporter. I just write as fast as I can while it happens. I'm not directing it. I'm, and, and this goes, this will get into when we, when, if if we talk about the shut up and write method Hmm. where I'm not editing at all, I'm writing as fast as I can. And just recording that scene. So I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like if I were a character in a novel, I would be like this. I'd have a psychic power where I could see things happening. And I could tell you everything that was happening. And then you'd go over and go, wow, it happened just like that. Mm. Right. Dang. Cool. Well, so uh, I had some other questions. We'll skip or maybe put those on the end. Tell us about the shut up and write method. Okay. So the, the basic method is to divide the writing process into its constituent components. And the most, the three most basic are um, writing, editing, and sharing. And again, we don't, we're not, we're not calling it publishing. We're not, you know, uh, yes, it is a novel. I am trying to write a novel, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, Yes. And I want to publish it and I want people to read it, but I'm not, that's not why I'm writing. I'm writing to tell a story. And if nothing else, I've entertained myself. Every time I Re- reread this. I'm like, I hope other people like it as much as <laughs> I do. And that's the only reason I want to get it out. So you've divided that up because our brain, and this goes into some neurological science, can't write. If, it, if you try and write with one part of your brain, your spatial brain, and edit it with your analytical brain at the same time, you're a journalist, which is great. You can do that, right? Journalists that's what they're trained to do is to think of a, of a thing and, and, and edit because they've got to kick it out really fast. But by and large, it's a really bad habit. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to go, you know, because I have got really good journalist friends. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to disparage them at all because I'm in awe, but you have to, you know, and within the, then you divide that down within the writing. I'm ideating. What am I going to write? What, what's my setting? What are my characters? That's where you build your story Bibles or your um, your character analysis or your plot. You know, you talk about all that over here and then you draft. Drafting is where shut up and write sits. Mm. We sit right at the drafting point because so many people are trying to do everything else rather than just sit down and writing in a, in a, in a community of people that are going to support that. Then you get into the edit, edit, rewrite, rewrite, edit, write, rewrite. <laughs> and that's the polishing phase, right? And if you can divide those two, you're, you're, you will find your, your thinking is more clear. Your ability to put words on paper is more clear. If you're sitting, so this goes back to the method. The method is just draft, just draft. Um, it goes back to your first question. What's my name? It's interest in names. I love names too. They're s- incredibly important to how people relate to a story. But when I'm writing, I put brackets and say name. And if I need any information about that, and I keep writing, I say city, blah, 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 because then I put it in brackets so I can find it on a search. Mm. And I do all that stuff while I'm editing or doing story Bible stuff, any of that. Because if you stop and do that, it's like, you know, you're banging away and you've got, you're at 250 words and you say, and, and such and such walked into the room. What's his name? His name is uh, Damon. Is it Damon? No, it's not Damon. <laughs> and boom, you're gone. You just lost your flow, right? And so anytime you come up to a, a roadblock, you put brackets around it and keep going. So that's hugely so important. Another is that just a habit? Is, that, that's something you, like a, a rule you've set for yourself. And I'm going to follow this every time. I'm not going to get hung up. And then you proceed. Because, yes, yeah, so that, that and, and, and we've proven this, right? We, we, have, we have proofs in the pudding. I've led 500 of these events, we've gotten a million pages have been written and shut up and write, mm-hmm. right? I mean, if, if people follow this method, they get more words on the paper and then you can practice becoming a good editor, mm-hmm. a good self editor. No, are you doing line editing, um, grammar editing, story editing, plot editing? Are you working on your through lines? That's completely different than just sitting and writing. And it even makes the rewrites easier. Mm-hmm. It, you know, when I'm, when I get it, when I've got the draft and I'm now assembling it and I've written down scene headings on cards and I'm putting them out in front of me, 
that's all so much easier because I didn't, I didn't try and make the perfect sentence for every paragraph. Right. I was just like, did he, you know, am I, Oh, wow. I use passive voice there. I can't do passive voice. I need to, Oh, I just shifted, shifted tense. I went from I to he, don't worry about it. Just write yeah. it. You'll, you're, you're, we're all smart enough to go back and clean that up or find an editor to help us with yeah. it. Right. So that's, that's the core of it. There, there's one other thing that's really important is to not read back on it while you're in the middle of a draft. When I sit down to read again, I'll read one paragraph back. Oh, really? And, and that's, that's, that, that seems worrisome because you think, oh, I want to con- do continuity. You got the continuity in your head. You're not trusting it. You just have to trust that continuity. And what you will find is, and I've seen this with multiple people, is you'll, if you follow that, you'll get to the end, you'll go back for your, re- your, your read through, right? Your first read through, and you'll see one scene three different times, one important point written from three different perspectives. And you go, that's important. <laughs> I'm going to pump that up. I'm going to make it into one thing and really make that about that. That's the focal point of my scene. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, that's cool. Right? Because you've allowed yourself to just put it out there rather than editing in your yeah. head. Yeah, because it seems like... So that's that's a lot of it. it. There's one other thing. Oh. One other thing I'm going to add, because Shut Up and Write method is really important. It's a time and place. Hmm. It's a time and a place. I commit to doing a thing. I show up with the people. We go around the circle briefly saying, hi, my name is Randy. I'm working on my science fiction novel. You say, hi, I'm Jay. I'm working on my science fiction story. I'm working on my podcast. That simple. We go around and then we go head down for an hour. Just no distractions. You know, maybe you get up, go to the restroom. You you get a different cup of coffee or a glass of wine or something. But it's just an hour of writing. And then we stop and we say, how did it go? And we don't read back. We don't. Because that changes. That, and, and, and I know there's always this question. Well, what about we can talk about inspiration separately. But it, if I write knowing I'm going to share it with you, I'm going to edit. And if you edit, you slow down. You don't get the story out of your head. Uh, can I ask you this kind of personal? Do you consider yourself an extrovert or an introvert? I am a um, comfortable introvert. Okay. Right. I really, and it's interesting because I'm fine in groups of people. I, I can go anywhere, do anything. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy in most situations. And yet I have gotten very good at going, okay, I've been outside talking with lots of people doing this thing. I'm going to go home and I'm going to sit and I'm going to breathe and I'm going to write and just yeah, it, cool down. And I ask that because it strikes me as kind of an interesting blend of both in the, it's a social event. You're going there and you're around other people and yet you're also having some alone time. Like the majority of it is alone time kind of ironically. Uh, anyway, I just think that's an interesting well, well, mix. Well, no, that, that's a it's, a it's 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 part of the shut up and write magic, which is writing is an inherently lonely process. Mm. So if once a week I get together with a group of people that we're not oversharing, I know you, I see you every week. You're nice, you're kind to me, <laughs> and that's all that matters. And we're doing we're all doing the same thing. You can go to cafes, and this guy's over here doing uh, coding a website, and this woman over here is programming some SQL. I mean, this is San Francisco, oh. right? So everyone's like working on a uh, you know, th- but it's not the same as if we all sit in a group, you know, around our tables and we go around and, and we say who we are and we all make the intention to write for an hour. And then we write together for an hour and we sit up and we go, that was powerful. I have a community and out of this habit of time and place, I've just, I've, I've, I've got a success now. I just did this thing. And, and again, the low, the, it's a low bar. Mm-hmm. I don't expect people to I mean, great friendships have been built out of this. We have um, two of our um, organizers just travel around together now. They just came every week to the one I ran for years. And then they just like, they love writing together, you know, and I don't know what else their friendship entails, but they love writing together and just kind of, they're like Johnny Appleseed going around going, oh my God, this is so great. So that loneliness is cured in small little increments by going, I have a group, I can, I'm safe. I'm not oversharing, but I, but people see me, they recognize me. I walk in the door. Everyone's like, Hey, it's good to see yeah. you. And you sit down and you write, right? Uh, how, how big are these or, or not? Are they always, but sometimes what's, what's the biggest group you've had? The av- average, average groups are five to 10 people mm-hmm. because it's, 
the the point is I we're making this as large as possible because it's really simple and it really helps yeah. people. It really helps. However, your writing group isn't, I mean, there's 6,000 members in San Francisco. I know t- 20 of them, right? It's not the point. I don't need 6,000 people to get my writing done. I need the, the, the two to 10 that show up every week with me yeah. and write. That's my writing group, right? It's, it's the ability to say, this is super simple. So no matter where you go, I've had someone go from Scotland, moved to Japan, started a group there, and it's the same type of group. You can go to Scotland now. You can go to, um, um, not Inverness, but, um, oh gosh, I'm so embarrassed. You can go there <laughs> and get the, get a writing session and then end up in Tokyo and have the same experience with a different group of people because we built that simple, this is how you do it. Don't overdo it kind of. Yeah. So the nearest group to me is about an hour away, which I'm willing to do, but I think it might be a little detrimental for a habit. So I actually applied to start my own group nearby. So I'm, I'm waiting on my application to come back from your team. <laughs> Perfect. So. Perfect. We've had a super busy week this week, but you'll hear okay. yeah, from yeah. us soon. And it, and it, and it is that easy. We're part of what we've been talking about this week is making sure that um, people have all the tools they need. I mean, we've, We've got a, a little thing you go through that says this is how, you know, part of it is just being kind to people when they walk mm-hmm. in. One of the most important things is finding uh, a place that you can get to easily that is not going to be, you know, if an hour away, you go there once a month. Great. Mm-hmm. But you want to, you know, you can get on the bus. You can you can get there in your car. There's parking. It's a safe space if you do it in the evening um, that people don't feel um, threatened walking out at you know, eight o'clock at night into the dark, you know, so there, there are some things that we help you work through and then how to run the event. And it's, then that's it. That's pretty, it's pretty much simple. Dang, that's so cool. (laughs) Um, Let's see. And it's that simplicity that's allowed us to grow like this because we're, you know, all that other stuff is really good. Anything else you do for writing, you can do with us in a group where you feel comfortable and not as lonely and you, there's an accountability that grows out of Dang. that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay. Oh, it's kind of a, maybe a question you haven't encountered. Have, have you adapted these principles to other facets of your life? Uh, Cause I, I really do think you're on something very fundamental. Like, like this is a deep and important principle and has it gone outside of writing for you? Um, I pretty much use this for everything I do. <laughs> um, but, but so when I say I write every day, it don't mistake the fact that, that I spend, um, um, maybe 45 minutes working on a, a game idea mm. or, um, I'm actually, um, my son can now drive. Um, <sighs> right. So I sit down and I think I'm thinking that through, there are a certain number of cars in the family and, his safety and storms. And, you know, I mean, so this is thinking I, I use this method to go through my thinking process, Mm. right? It's, it is um, the writing itself is, is, is ultimately a, a a worthy, it's a worthy endeavor. Um, And so I apply the, I, my thinking has gotten better and better. My ability to think critically to, do critical analysis, critical thinking um, has only improved the more I've read. Hey, that's cool. Um, have, have you ever forced yourself to write? And actually, I should just say, this kind of came from a personal NaNoWriMo experience where I I dove into NaNoWriMo and I wrote and I hit the goal. And I've never really done anything with what I published because I, I felt like it was a little bit junky. Um, and that's not to say I actually do want to go back to it. but I guess the question is, how do you balance it between creating too much fluff that then is just a headache to edit and maybe you never want to go back to it? Have you ever struggled with that question and what advice do you have? Um, yes, I have struggled with that. And and NaNoWriMo in particular presents a an, an interesting conundrum because if, you know, and I don't think I've made it all the way through, I'll I'll, I'll be honest, but even... The weeks I did get through were incredibly 
like I did this thing. Look at this stuff. Um, but it, it does it does create a problem that for which there is a a, a fairly simple solution. Um, so let me answer the first first part of the question. Yes, I I strive to write junk. I don't <laughs> mind writing crap. I'm not trying to write write the great American novel. I'm trying to write, right? And so when I became Dickensian at the beginning of this process, and so Proteus Knife started out as a computer game back in the 90s. I had a, a small outfit. We were literally building a real-time oh. computer game, and this is the story I developed. Can I just um, ask, what, what genre yeah. was the game? It was an adventure, sort of like Tomb Raider, okay. or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then that all went by the wayside and I moved to San Francisco and I went, oh, well, I'm by myself. I'll just, I'll start writing it as an, as a novel. And then I started to shut up and write and really delved into it. And in a year, my first year, I started this in August of 2007, by the end of the summer of 2008, I had written three novels, (laughs) three incomplete novels with outlines, story Bible, the whole thing. Cause I was like, bam, I'm going to do this thing. And then I went back and, and have been rewriting the first novel ever since. And I've gotten, and I noticed that as I wrote, as I got toward the, th- the third novel, I was a much better writer than I was in the first uh. one. So as I do the rewrites, I have to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. And then as I finished this first novel, as it's getting very ripe, it has completely changed all the story that's behind it. So in, a, in effect, I've got two novels that I'm just going to go through and cherry pick. Yeah. Right. I'm just going to go through with a red pen and go, this is important. This is important. This is important. And I'm just going to rewrite it. Cause I don't mind re I don't mind writing. I've got the habit, right? It's it's, and it's the same thing with a NaNoWriMo 50,000 word. That's the rough draft of a novel. Mm-hmm. We do the same thing. It's just on a longer time scale. If you show up every week at a shut up and write and you, just do the method and you write a thousand to fifteen hundred words, you'll have the rough draft of a novel in one year. Oh, that's cool. Right. So NaNoWriMo com- and, it, and it will, and if you just leave it alone and don't read back and just do it, you'll end up with the kind of the same mess you end up with at NaNoWriMo. You just won't be as burned. Out, right? <laughs> but either way, you have to do the same thing. You do a reread, right? And you go through and go. So you make, you make your little spreadsheet and say, here's my, th- here's my plot. Here's my love through line. Here's my um, dark night of the soul through line. Here's, you know, and you go through and you circle those and you number them and you, you lay that whole thing out and you go, now let's see if we can, what, what's the great quote? Um, how do you, how do you make these beautiful sculptures? I, some oh. famous sculptor was asked, how do you make these beautiful, like marble sculptures? And he said, I just carve away everything that doesn't look like an angel. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's that, but that's a different process it's a different process so if you do the the editing process in your head separate from the writing process then you edit then you go back and you put the writer back on and then you write it again yeah huh dang that's cool and uh i i think you pointed out for me what was a significant barrier which is just that i felt exhausted and spent at the end of NaNoWriMo and this sounds like that won't be a problem and if that's not a problem then maybe there isn't a problem so that's cool. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, well, I mean, it's like with anything, you know, when you you get to the end of a, a really heavy week, like we've been doing strategy sessions, you know, for a week, just like because of the changes, the wonderful changes we're going through and the growth we're going through and we're all exhausted, mm. right? But it's a good exhaustion. You're like, wow, I did a thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Right? And you have to give yourself you know, you have to give yourself the little trophy, the participation trophy. <laughs> I, mean, I think you get something from NaNoWriMo and you stick it to your board and you go, great, I'm going to rest for a week and then I'm going to do a reread. Yeah. Right. I'm going to read it, read through and, and take my red pen and mark it. Yeah. Out. Um, so you talked about the three phases and the third phase was sharing. Uh, and, and for me, like we recently talked on the podcast about uh, having your peers and readers give you feedback and, and, and have, have them shape that editing process toward the end. Where does that fit into the shut up and write method? Uh, it, it, at this point, it doesn't, we've experimented with different, um, different things. We had a, a critique group um, for a couple of years um, and it worked 
great. It was actually a really good format that Bob had brought back from, he would go to writers, um, these, these writers where, um, um, writing groups, uh, critique groups in LA that where all these actors would show up to do cold reads wow. and all these writers would show up to test out new ideas. You know, I was like, wow, I would love to have been there. You know, it was like 50 people show up and three have signed up to read and some actor gets up there and reads the first part of your novel and then everyone talks about it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's one method. There's the, um, um, there's a, a, a method in, in science fiction where you, uh, have a small group and each of you, submit a chapter each month typewritten, you know, it's a small group because you're going to have to read three chapters and, mm -hmm. and edit them up. Um, we don't do any of that at this point because that's just, it's, that's an extra thing. The, and, and as I, as, as I would like to say, as we grow, as we solidify over the next year, our members, our writers will tell us what mm -hmm. they need. If they need a lot of critique, if they need editors, we'll help them figure that yeah. out. So we're not doing it right now. It is incredibly important to have a small group that you can trust um, and um, to, to do that with. Yeah. Um, well, so for our listeners' sake, let me just speculate. So you're not facilitating a critique group, which I think is awesome. But some at some point they may need that. And maybe they will have friends who they have met every Wednesday night and you you could trust one of those friends to say, "Hey, I just finished my draft. Would you like to read through it and and be my first reader?" Yeah. So so maybe something like that could happen. Yeah, I mean, there's um, I don't know if you're familiar with the term. It's called Milford M I L F O R D is named for a science fiction writer. The Milford um, Milford groups, and that's where that method comes from because there has to be um, it, there there are some base rules to critiquing, which is um, that you're critiquing the 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 material and not the, not the writer, mm -hmm. right? It's like, it's like art school. You, we're going to tear that piece of art you just put <laughs> on the wall. We're going to tear it to pieces, but you're fine. <laughs> you're great. Just do it again. And, and so there, there are some rules to that. And it's also not having many people in the group because I'm going to hand you a chapter a month and that person has to take time out of their life. You know, if there's four people in the group, you're reading three chapters that month mm -hmm. and giving good feedback on it. Right. So it's a, that's why it goes beyond the scope of what we're doing. It's not simple, right? We, we, we need to keep simple. And, but there are ways to build those. You, like I say, you in the same group with someone every week and say, Hey, should we get a Milford group together for six months mm -hmm. and read through it? But everyone got enough to, to submit for that. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Cool. Uh, so I haven't heard of the Milford method, but I, I will look it up. That sounds interesting. Um, uh, I, and this is a, well, yeah, I, I think this relates to, um, so your website is beautifully designed and I, I imagine that your, your, uh, creative manager, what's that called? Uh, creative director. Yeah, yeah, that your career as a creative director had an influence on that. Um, do you, it, it, it did, except I didn't design that. I have to say we have a, a designer oh. named Michael who, who, but I do get to say that's pretty and. <laughs> I don't love that as much. But okay, I let them do their work. Yeah, well, Michael, then you you have done a stellar job. <laughs> um, it's good branding. Uh, so, so my question related to that, and just because I wanted to tap into your expertise a little, and, and again, I know you don't focus on the publishing aspect, but just give our if if someone has finished their manuscript, they've edited it really well. What tips do you have for making sure they brand their novel well? And honestly, that's a huge question. Maybe I should make it small. What, yeah, what's I mean, one it, small tip? It, 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 yeah, I mean, consistency, consistency. You, you, um, and and this is where working with an editor is really important because you may think it's about this, and the editor's go going to mm -hmm. go. No, this is how that you should pitch this. Um, having that that type of outside feedback, and it's there's a balance there. We're actually. Um, um, Malika, one of the members of our team and I are now writing a book on why you should write. And one of the things we talk about is I'm going to, I want your feedback, but if you give me feedback, I'm going to use it or not, but I'm not going to do what you say necessarily. Yeah. Right. I mean, I have to say true to my vision. And so it's, I don't know, it's tricky. Like I say, I, I often joke that once I've 
once we've really settled this and I've gotten a little further in my writing, I'm going to, I'm going to start shut up in public <laughs> and then I'll have all those answers. Dang, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> when I was looking at your site, it seemed like, cause I didn't know anything about it and it seemed very well altruistic. And I was kind of like, well, what's the catch? And, and so I imagine other people might feel that too. And, and yeah, the truth is there isn't a catch. There is, this is for writers. There is this no is catch. a very altruistic. I, yeah. um, this, like I say, this is, this is part of my legacy. This is my give back. Um, no matter what we do with it in the future, and if we ask people this, the the meetings, the the membership will always be free. Mm. It's this is meant to this is meant to bring people out of loneliness and and around an intentionality of writing. We're not going to talk politics. We're not going to you know it's, it's a great Radiohead lyric: "Don't <laughs> talk politics and don't throw stuff." Right? Just there's a we all crave being safe and expressing ourselves. And so I've given it, you know, we're not even talking. I don't have to listen to you. You just have to. I'm just giving you a safe space to write. And um, altruistically, if this works and, and we start making a little money, um, the 501c3, um, I'm very interested in literacy. Um, there are lots of things I want to do that, that provide resources um, to to schools, to um, to kids in places that don't get enough books, um, incarcerated people don't get ne get nearly enough support when they're going through a hard time in their life to think better, to write, to express themselves, to you know. So it's like libraries and in, in in prisons, there should be writing, you know. So maybe we get to do those things. Mm. That's me. That's what I would do. When 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 I when I get my fifty dollars, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go teach people to uh, to read and write. <laughs> Excellent, man! That's so awesome. Yeah, I I think you're doing such a good thing, and I, I wish you the most success. I, I just think that's sweet. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And the way you can help is start your group and just be there every week. Yeah. Right? So uh, I will there. So listeners, there are a bunch of links in the show notes. If you'll just click on that below, but. Uh, Rennie, tell us if someone wants to start, what do they do? H how do they do it? Well, the, you just sign up and to meet in person, we, we, we use the meetup platform. So you'll make a, a membership with us and um, then you'll look for uh, events in your area. If you want to meet in a cafe and um, it will go through and you'll have to make a meetup um, um, login also. Um, the um, and because you'll have that on your dashboard, all your meetups. Once you sign up for once you once you sign up for a series, you're automatically RSVP'd every week at that time. Okay. And it's it's that simple. And we have both online. Um, so the, and that's we don't use like I say we're not using Meetup for that anymore because they're not really set up. They're Meetup, right? Mm -hmm. That's that. You know, I was lucky enough to meet the CEO, the original CEO who started that after 9/11 when he realizes people just needed to get out of their apartments, you know, and they were standing around in the street um, charging their phones off whoever had power. Um, and so there's, it's, it's, it's that simple. It should take five minutes to get completely signed up. You find an event you want to go to. We have events, we have a hundred and 120, 180, somewhere between 120 and 180 events online every week. Dang. Right. So, and because they're they're hosted internationally, so any time zone and 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 I will give a plug for them. Uh, Glasgow, that was the city I was trying to remember. Glasgow, oh. Scotland. <laughs> Those guys are some of our favorites. They're they're great. They run a great event. So you know um, you get to meet international friends and you get to meet your local group. It's that easy. And if you want to become a if there's nothing near you and you want to become one, you just click the link that says um, I would like to host. Yeah, and we'll. We'll put you through the rigorous process of like, are you nice? <laughs> um, will you show up every week? Um, because we want the 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 best part about being a host, as I can attest, is you get your writing done. Mm. First and foremost, you're not there watching people. You're not proctoring. You're actually there to get your writing done with everyone. Yeah. Else. Yeah. Cool. Dang, that's awesome. Um, in conclusion, I, I'd love to ask you just a couple wrap rapid fire questions and then we'll wrap this up. Sure. Um, sure. sure. Paper, ebook, audiobook, or podcasts. <laughs> I'm I am um I'm a paper book 
person. I'm, I'm very old fashioned, but um, I read more because of my uh, Kindle app on my min- iPad mini. Cool. So I keep that with me at all times so I can read. Yeah. Just, just when reading. you're ready. That's cool. Um, I hear that you're a fan of D and D. How did you first become a fan? <laughs> I became a fan because a friend invited me over to his house, um, playing first edition Dungeons and Dragons and um, interactive storytelling. You know, that's how I describe it. It's um, I get to be the hero. I get to solve major problems and 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 get cool magical swords. So what's not to love? <laughs> yeah. um, we still play. I still run a, a regular game. I still play in regular games of D and D and all sorts of other role playing. So games. you're a DM. Yeah. yeah. Dang, that's cool. Uh, do you have a favorite video game? I, I love the Fallout series. Oh, cool. I love. I love. I have played all of the Fallout games multiple times. Dang, really. I love something about that post-apocalyptic like vibe is kind of, yeah. you know, does it. So I, I haven't played it, but I, I hear it's a great story and yeah. Right. Yeah. There, it's, and it's contiguous, you know, they they started very simple as, as isometric games and now they're real time 3d and um, yeah, they're just, they're great storytelling and you can play them any way you want. You can, uh, cause it's a role-playing game. You can play a really, agile person who just pickpockets everyone through the whole game, or you can play someone who's literally has no idea. You can play with zero intelligence so that no, you don't understand what anyone's saying oh. and get through the, and get through the wow. game. Dang. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's really good interactive storytelling. Dang. Yeah. That sounds sweet. Um, who do you look up to as a writer? Mm. Mm. So many people, I would say um, Frank Herbert, uh, William Gibson, um, Samuel Delaney is one of my favorites. Um, um, uh, Stephen Barnes, who's active now. Um, I think all, uh, William Gibson is still writing. Uh-huh. Stephen Barnes is still writing. Those other two aren't. Um, I could sort of go. We could get started because my, <laughs> my bookshelf is full of those guys. Authors yeah. Huh. Cool. Um, and then last or actually, no, two more. What book are you going to read tonight? I am reading Wired for Story oh. by Lisa Crone. Yeah, we actually talked about it's that a, on this podcast. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's a fabulous book. I've got it. I've got notes. I've got it marked up. I've got post-its in it. Dang, that's yeah, cool. I love okay, it. and then last question. What is a book you love that I probably haven't read? Okay, I would, I'm actually going to give you two. Okay. okay. One is Dal- Dahlgren. By Samuel Delaney. Okay. And um, it is, um, it's very apropos to the cultural changes going on today. It's, um, it's very trippy, but it's very much outcasts trying to figure out, you know, you watch what teenagers are going through these days, which I do a lot. And, and it's a, it's a topsy turvy world. And, and I think it speaks to it, to that now as well as it did 40 years ago. Um, the other one is space, um, uh, uh, operating manual for spaceship earth by our Buckminster full. Hmm. And tell us a little about that one. It's um, I'm a, I, I would just call myself a fullerite, right? Okay. Which is do the most with the least for the, for the most people, hmm. right? This idea of uh, s- extraction, um, it, making all of one person holding all of the resources there's enough. He part of the idea here is there's enough resources on the planet for everyone to be a millionaire. Mm. We just have to be nice to each other and be nice to the earth. Dang. You know, so it's, I'm, you know, I haven't read it in a few years. It's, it's. Um, he was an engineer, but he was writing in the '60s and '70s, so it's probably got a little of that bent. But that drives me. That idea of how can I be the most help and take up the least resources. Dang. Right. So that's so cool. Well, Rennie, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's great to meet you. Uh, as we close, do you, you you can literally say anything. Do you do you have a URL that you want people to go to? Is there an ask? Is there an admonition? Uh, I'll let you have the closing words. Okay. Um, yes, please join us at shutupright.com because anything you're trying to do in writing, you can do in 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 our in do with us. It doesn't conflict with any software you're using or any other method you're using. It's your home for writing. 
Um, and all those other things that will happen, they're going to happen when you shut up and write. Dang, that's awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the time. This has been really, I learned stuff about myself I kind of forgot. Oh, so that's excellent. Thank you for helping yep. me. Okay. Well, thank you. And, and to our listeners, it's time to start writing. <laughs>